Drama of the War of the Thorns in Yemen, Part 1. What's going on in Yemen? 27th January 2011. Yes, the revolution started. The people of Yemen took to the streets in the name of social justice, demanding the formation of a legitimate civil state without nepotism, without corruption. 18th March 2011. This was a fatal date of the Juma massacre. The beginning of the reign of terror in Yemen. Snipers loyal to President Saleh killed at least 45 demonstrators. Mostly university students and three children. They wounded 200 others. Most of the injuries were head, neck and chest wounds, showing that the snipers were aiming to kill. 22nd February 2012. The Yemeni parliament absolved the dictatorial Saleh regime from legal responsibility. This was in return for the withdrawal of the power and the extradition of Saleh's 20-year standing deputy, Abd Rabu Mansur Hadi, who temporarily functioned as president of Yemen. That was called the Gulf Initiative. How on earth did Abd Rabu Mansur Hadi become president of Yemen? There was an election in Yemen in which it was agreed that Hadi should become president. 27th of February 2012. After President Hadi's election, there was a year of intense debate and discussion. Followed on 18th March 2013 by the beginning of the Yemeni National Dialogue, protracted, intensive and stressful. This ended on 25th of January 2014, though the whole proceedings spanned nearly two years. How did the Houthi enter into the National Dialogue? Here the drama started. The US government, through the US ambassador, forced the Yemeni government to include the Houthis in the National Dialogue and also created more seats for the Houthis than was justified by their numbers. There was no attempt to impose a ban on weapons and attacks on civilians as a condition of their acceptance. This is a supreme example of dirty politics. How could the United Nations and the Western powers agree with the involvement of an armed group who continue to kill and attack towns and villages? This is contrary to basic principles. Even so, they are a Nazi fascist terrorist organization, anti-human, anti-civilization. They preach violence and hatred among children, urging them to kill Christians and Jews all around the world. The Houthi militia's slogan and logo reads, God is great, death to America, death to Israel, curse on the Jews, victory to Islam. So how could the Obama regime and John Kerry have supported them? Maybe because their atrocities were localised. Those atrocities include entering into towns and villages, threatening homes, destroying and burning schools and mosques, killing people and abducting children from government institutions. There was an agreement through the National Dialogue which resulted in Yemen being declared a territorial system of six regions agreed by all parties. This was on 10th February 2014. How did the capital city fall into the hands of the Houthis without use of arms? The answer is that the 33-year dictator Saleh, with his old regime and the Yemeni army leaders, gave the capital to the Houthi with no resistance, as he had built up the army to belong to himself and his family. That was on 21st September 2014. On the same day as the capital was occupied, the Peace and National Partnership Agreement was initiated with the support of UN representative Jamal Ben Omar. 27th September 2014. This day saw the signing of the peace agreement and national partnership. Oh, my God.
God, all done in six days. This must be a record. The result of this was a new National Accord government, led by Khalid Baha as Prime Minister. 10th October 2014 On this date, there began the change of state ministries by entering followers loyal to Houthis and the Saleh old regime. While the Houthi occupied villages, cities and the Yemeni administration, the United Nations continue to maintain dialogue with all Yemeni factions as if none of the turmoil had happened. Under Houthi rule, journalists began to be imprisoned, tortured, even killed. They were not allowed to release any information. Only their own media were allowed to exist. 14th October 2014. The Houthi continue to take cities, rather like continuing game of monopoly. They took the entire city of Hodeida with only five non-armoured jeeps. Again, this was done with the collusion of the army of the deposed dictator Saleh. After that, all the Yemeni cities were handed to the Houthi on a silver plate, without a car. This shows that the real numbers of the Houthi were minuscule. The drama has changed. From taking cities, they have switched their attention to the president. On 21st January 2015, he was placed under house arrest. A number of the president's bodyguard were liquidated. The only resistance was in the presidential palace. But Saleh managed to penetrate the elite guard protecting the house as they had been protecting him for 33 years. The drama draws towards its end, with the house arrest of the head office manager, the defence minister, and their approved prime minister. 22nd January 2015. The last act of this part of the drama. President Hardy and the prime minister signed the resignation document to present to the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives could not hold a hearing because Saleh Houthi had imposed a curfew on the capital city, so there was no assembly to accept or reject the resignation. On 22nd January 2015, Houthis and Saleh's old regime announced that the leader of the armed group Abdul Malik al Houthi is the new king and the master of the Arabian Peninsula. The monopoly is working very well for them. On 6 February 2015, the Houthis announced the Constitutional Declaration. Of course, the issue led to the dissolution of Parliament. And they took over the Revolutionary Committee headed by Mohammed Ali al Houthi who was announced as a new president of Yemen for a period of two years. 9th February 2015, Yamal Ben-Omar, the UN representative, convened all heads of parties and blocs in Yemen to sign the Houthi document, surrendering control of Yemen to the Houthis. In other words, surrendering the country to the armed group. All parties resolutely refused to sign. This shows that the evil plan to give power to the armed group was complete, and Yemen would be a terrorist state led by a minority of less than 1% of the population. Why terrorist state? Because no government. The ideology derived from Iran was narrowly sectarian, treating all those not of the same faith as enemies. Dramatic action starts again. President Hardy escapes on 21st February 2015. He announced that he had withdrawn his resignation, stating that all the decisions taken from September 21st, 2014 are invalid and illegitimate. 
As regards the peace and partnership agreement, Aden was declared to be the temporary capital of Yemen. Oh, on 26 February 2015, the United Nations Security Council declared Abdurabu Mansur Hadi as the legitimate president of Yemen. 8th March 2015 Iranian officials declare that Iran has become an empire and Yemen the 39th province of Iran and the 4th Arab capital city to fall under the Persian Empire. The saga of Tom and Jerry continues on 19th March 2015. Saleh is still in pursuit of Hadi and besieged his palace in Aden. Citizens took up arms to protect themselves against the militias of Salih and the Houthis. There was a Saleh air raid on the presidential palace of Aden. 25th March 2015, Jerry resolutely refused to give up the struggle. Saleh did not succeed in arresting the president. Instead, he arrested his brother, Nasser Mansur Hadi, together with Major General Zubehi, Faisal Rajab, commander of the 119th Brigade. This is the end of part one. The War of the Thorns of Yemen, part two. On 26th March 2015, 12 p.m. Yemeni time was the beginning of the decisive struggle. <laughs> President Hadi escaped to Hadramaut and from there to the Sultanate of Oman and then to Riyadh. He asked for the intervention of the Arab coalition led by Saudi Arabia, which targeted radar stations, airfields and militia camps. What we as the Yemeni movement believe in. John Kerry's basic ideology is to diminish devastation through weakening terrorist groups by making them fight each other with no cost in American lives and further to weaken the region. This theory does not yet seem to have been vindicated by diminished destruction. His theory has the base of supporting groups who are no military threat to the USA, which in his opinion include the Shia. He tried to support the idea of the revival of the Persian Empire as part of the policy of divide and rule. Better one state than many states to control? Even better if that one state is weak in military matters but strong in terms of internal oppression. The Iranians have their old, new, ancient dream of becoming an empire, even if that is flimsier than paper. Unfortunately, the Shia faith has been distorted by the Iranians for their own ends, and they claim to be the protectors of Shia worldwide. They deprive the faith of its meaning, totally change the essence of the faith, for their dream of restoring their ancient empire. It is totally illusory to try to bring back the ancient past, in which goodness knows there have been so many empires. The weaknesses and policies of the Arab governments also contribute towards these illusions. Because of their utter dependence on America and their total lack of strategy, they will not be able to resist John Kerry's proposals. We as the Yemeni movement, together for a better Yemen, see that crimes against the Yemeni people have been perpetrated at the hands of John Kerry, Barack Obama, the US ambassador to Yemen, the Iranian terror regime, Ban Ki-moon and his representative in Yemen, Jamal ben Omar, the dictatorial former President Saleh, the head of the armed group al Houthi, the Ahmar family, President Hadi, Khalid Baha, all Yemeni's parties and politicians who accept dealing with Houthi. After the Gulf Initiative, dealing with Saleh, the terrorist group Hezbollah, who destroy the Arab nations and get their power from Lebanon. We consider Lebanon to be a terrorist state. We also blame the weakness of the Arab League. Most of all, we blame the so-called defenders of human rights, like Amnesty, Oxfam, MSF, Médecins Sans Frontières, and other organizations who act as if they were the rulers of Yemen. 
their so-called material support for Yemen is in fact destroying Yemen, furthermore supporting a gun culture among Yemeni children.